fine. Say they want to read my mind. They really want to read my mind. Telling you right now, all you'll find is a lost soul, rich and blind. They say they want to read my mind. Do you really want to read my mind? I promise all that you will find is a lost soul, rich and blind. I know I have a purpose, but I don't see the purpose. They tell me the death of me gon' be the purpose. I know they lace pills, I bought them on purpose. Life's unreal. Well, okay, okay. Just, just, just quickly. I mean, that's that's a really interesting line and quite a clever one. Um, I know I have a purpose, but I don't see the purpose. It's like I know I have a reason to be here, and I know I have things to offer the world and to give. But at the same time, it's like, what's the point in that? You know, what's what's the purpose in having a purpose? You know, and I have existential type conversations with people about things like this surprisingly frequently you know people come into the clinic um they're quite often feeling depressed they're quite often feeling hopeless and they just have this kind of what's the point type <clears throat> feeling and attitude you know we're all going to die anyway we're all going to be forgotten about we are uh, <clears throat> a mere blip in the lifespan of the planet we are a mere blip in the lifespan of the human species as a whole does anything actually really matter on the grand scheme of things? And on top of that, with Jared, you know, he's saying that that none of it matters anyway. Because he's likely to die soon. You know, people are telling him <clears throat> that the death of him is going to be the perks. And he knows that and they know that. In fact, he's, you know, he's buying them on purpose despite being laced uh, with something that makes him even stronger and, and therefore likely more risky for him. It's just like he doesn't care. And, and what's really sad about this is it seems like he genuinely doesn't care about living. He genuinely doesn't care about the value of his own life. And I come across this and people, is it often? I don't know if it is that often. But some people view the world this way because of depression some people view the world this way because of experiences that they've had but some people are just i don't know i don't, I don't know how to phrase it like existentially minded you know they don't want to die but if they were to die then they're not really that bothered about it there's just so many perspectives of life. It's really interesting. You know, some some seem quite intellectual. Some seem quite philosophical. <clears throat> some perspectives are driven by kind of mental health and mental illness. Some perspectives are driven by um, kind of the states that you can get into when you when you take things. You know, you're going to try to kind of unpick all of that. My mind, I promise all that you will find. Okay, so, you know, it's like he knows the impact it, it has on people when other people go. You know, he's talking here about someone called, I remember losing Little Bro. I don't know who Little Bro is. You're probably going to have me in the comments for it. I'm sorry. I'm sure someone will explain. But it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's definitely someone that he's lost. Um, and, and he's talking about the impact that, that that has had on him. So he knows the impact it has on it knows the impact it's likely to have on other people when when he when he goes i know he's gone but when he was writing this well not writing this i always say writing this and people go juice world doesn't write his songs he freestyles them when he was spitting this verse um he kind of he was saying he understood what what the impact it was on people 
um, when other people go, you know. And he's saying that there's, um, there's something about uh, no world tour. So, you know, he's saying there's no world tour if he's, if he's lying in a hearse. And I can't tell from this line kind of how bothered he is by that. Or does he actually mean, but it ain't no world tour? Does that mean, is, is the term world tour not so much an actual going out and performing a world tour, but is this more metaphorical? As in, that that's it kind of over if he's lying in the hearse. That's it. He doesn't get to see any more of the world. Or does it mean li literal, as in, he won't be able to do a world tour and please his fans and get his music out there? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, let me know. But I can't tell actually how bothered he is by that. And, you know, I don't know, I keep thinking about this now. He just, it just, it just seems like he just generally doesn't care if he lives or dies. Or he feels so hopeless and helpless in this situation. And with his drug use. And seeing other people go, who are, I think, around a similar age as him. And whether he's just resigned himself to the fact that he's, he, was, he knew he was probably going to go quite soon. I get my tenses all mixed up when I'm talking about him. I don't mean to. People give me a hard time about that. Especially on the extracts. Life's unreal and death's uncertain It's funny how the blessed ones had the most curse Heart falling to the floor if we lose another person Take three more, I swear it's worth it But it ain't no world tour if I'm laying in a hearse I remember losing Lil Bro, he laying in the dirt Now I'm bound to drop a tear or two on every single verse Good turns, bad turns, when they die it's the worst Sometimes when I'm high, I feel high in reverse I ain't going out like that, you fuck with me Back in the chorus, I think. So there's just something there. Um, I ain't going to go out like that. You fuck with me, you get the work. You ain't going to see me in no wooden box. So what's he talking about before there? Uh, it's talking about little bro. So this is interesting because, you know, this changes things a little bit, bit from my perspective. Because he's saying he's not going to go out like that is he referring to how little bro went out i'm not sure the bat story there but but he he as in jared is, is going to shoot him first you know you're not you're not going to see me in no wooden box so it feels like he 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 knows he's going to go, but he also cares how he's going to go to some extent. If he does it to himself through the perks, then that kind of seems acceptable to him, but he's not going to go at someone else's hand. You know, he's going to protect himself. If someone comes for him, he's going to protect himself. Have I got this right or am I just massively off track here? I'm finding this one a bit of a struggle today for some reason. I don't know why that is. I don't know if that's my frame of mind and what I've got planned for the rest of the day or whether this track in particular is just... It's just a... He's, he's saying a lot, isn't he? It's the worst. Sometimes when I'm high, I feel high in reverse. I ain't going out like that, you fuck with me, you get the word. You ain't gonna see me in no wooden box, I'm gonna shoot them first. I promise y'all I'm finna touch the world, yeah, I'ma touch the earth. But hold on, your girl on my line, I think I may just fuck her first. Yeah. Gotta ask some crew here, just to keep a good vibe going, keep the song grooving. So I my money longer, shout out bro. They really want to read
so he's referencing other people he's lost again. And I think, I think one of my really, really early Juice World reactions, there was like a similar uh, kind of theme. And that must take its toll, mustn't it? That must take its toll on someone. Maybe he sees himself going the same way as if it's inevitable. Many real niggas left in here. RIP to all my peers. Smoking loud pack. What you say? I can't hear. But I still hear the fallen ones in my ears. Why, why do we live to die, die? When it's my time, time, time. I'll leave behind my and my 13 reasons why. Say they want to read my mind. They really want to read my mind. Telling you right now, all you'll find. Um, I feel that wasn't a very good reaction. I'm sorry. My thoughts were jumping around all over the place. I don't think I really explained or had many interpretations of things. Maybe that's okay. You know, my job as a therapist is to be curious about what someone is saying, not to say that I fully understand their experience of what they're trying to say. You know, I can never really understand and it's not really my, my job to. But, um, you know, be curious, ask questions, try to understand as much as I possibly can. And obviously it's really difficult with a few, a few song lyrics. And it's a hard listen as well, you know, this one. So it's surprisingly so. It's like a roller coaster of emotions for the listener. Never mind what this must have been like for Jared himself. And there seems to be a few little bits of hope in there. You know, there's, uh, there's glimpses into what's important to him. And what's meaningful to him. And kind of what he doesn't want. Well, it seems that way in the on the first kind of listen in a way. But then on the, on the other side of that, it's full of hopelessness. I have a purpose, but what's the purpose? You know, all these people have died. I'm a lost soul. I've got money. I'm I'm mega rich. But I'm blind in terms of where I see my life going. I'm blind as in trying to find a direction where I survive. I really hope, I don't know, part of me, part of me really hopes that I've misunderstood this song because it's so sad and I've made a massive mistake somewhere in my interpretation. I don't think I have much more to say about this. Sorry, this hasn't been a particularly good one, I don't think. But that's it from me. On to the next Juice World. See you in the next one. Take care. Goodbye.